Well, this is an unprompted video. I kind of got a new knife and I wanted to take them apart. And it's an excess dialogue, so I figured I'd kind of walk through if you've completely taken it all apart, uh, how you might easily put it back together. So I got my G10 scales up here. They're kind of like the last thing you're going to be worrying about. We got the blade right there. This guy actually has caged bearings. These are steel. Which is actually interesting. You don't see a whole lot of uh, Axis style locks. Usually they're using phosphor bronze, but this seems to be kind of a newer thing. This is a little backspacer. It's also G10. Goes along with the handles. Yeah, right over here we have the uh, the pivot that goes on the back side, as well as the uh, screw for it. This is your crossbar itself. This is what goes over the blade tang that uh, keeps the knife locked and then rolls around the back side of it to keep it closed. And these little infamous guys are the Omega Springs. You can see this guy, uh, the guy kind of got like a little hold or hook to him. It's got a thing there. And then you can see it kind of juts out there. And that's because it actually pins into the liners. You can see these little holes right here on each side. Okay, so in this particular guy, let's see, what do we want to do first? I think first thing I really want to do is put this backspacer back in. In this case, these two that are the backspacers are aluminum, and this one actually looks very similar, but it's steel, and that's because it's actually used as the blade stop. So you don't really want aluminum interfacing with steel because it'll deform really quickly. So, generally, figure out where these things go. Kind of. Make sure that they get all up in there. All nice and snug. I've noticed I do kind of a southern sound to my voice, uh, especially sometimes when I'm reading things as uh, when I'm playing video games, and that's really strange to me. Um, I'm certainly not southern. Uh, I was born and raised in uh, California, and I now live here in uh, beautiful Colorado, where it's super dry, all the time. <laughs> Alright, so yeah, you can see these little hook things here, and you want to hook them... And you see, I actually put them on backwards, because those pins need to be facing inward. <laughs> so, there we go. That one's a little looser on the hook. That's fine with me. Okay, to make this a little easier for myself, I'm going to actually put some screws in here really quick just to kind of hold them together. I got a couple of these screws right over here. These are T6, most common on uh, pocket knives, bench made and whatnot. I will say that this Gonzo um, really is essentially the same as an actual access lock and that's kind of because they copied it even before it was legal to do so which is I'm not really a huge fan of that but I do have a bench made here that I've taken apart and same exact construction except for this is aluminum on the inside so. alright whatever <laughs> Things are just a little tiny bit fiddly, and that's fine. So we got my crossbar here. You're going to want to basically lace it through. 
and then you see where you lace it down at the bottom there and then you slide it up and that's actually in position so in this particular case I can do that and then swing the spring on back around and uh, they're actually not too difficult to get back in the holes except for that's going the wrong way <laughs> So, you know what, I'll just take the other one, because I have that luxury in this position. Okay, so, slap him down on top, come on buddy, and there we go. So we get that guy snugged into position. That's good. Let's get the other one going on the other side here. Obviously facing in the correct direction. Generally that will help how things go back together, right? All right, cool. We in it. So next thing that I kind of want to do here is kind of slap G10 scale on this side really quick because I'm going to be putting the pivot through pretty quickly here on this side but before I do any of that I actually want to uh, take the blade Give myself a little knife loop on both sides. That'll actually help things kind of stick together. Now, in these particular caged bearings, you can see there's a nice presentation side, and there's a side that has kind of lips on it. And those are the kind of those are the sides that you actually want to face in towards the blade there. And you'll do that on both sides. These ones are actually uh pretty convenient because they actually recess into the blade which isn't my favorite way to implement ball bearings but for a benchmade lock style access thing it actually makes this process a whole lot easier rather than fighting external uh, washers and all that sort of annoying stuff <laughs> so alrighty let's go ahead and this guy does have a D-shaped pivot, like most access style knives will. And I want to put that through there. And come back underneath here. And just kind of try your best to slide the whole thing in. What can help a lot is uh, actually pulling back on the access bar to uh, get it to seat properly when it's in a correct position to do so. And you can also just take that off. And that <laughs> it's not quite where you go. <laughs> Alrighty. So, yeah, the next thing you need to actually figure out is which orientation that D-shaped pivot's going to go. So for here, I can actually pre-fit it. That way I can rotate it to the correct spot. So it's actually pretty easy to uh, deal with once it's finally put together here. Get that other bearing back in there. And then you can kind of hold the bearings as you... Uh, Shove him on in there. There we go. Yep, there you go. That basically got the pivot most of the way through. It's not quite through this liner yet, and that's perfectly fine. Because it's easy enough to uh, kind of force that guy into place. A lot of times I kind of like doing that with uh, the correct Torx bit. And kind of push them in there and you can turn them I wouldn't wrench on them really hard this has a rotation on it but that will help kind of move it just a little bit so it'll actually be in place 
This guy seems to be a little more stubborn than others. Well, that's okay. How about if we try to rotate the blade a little bit? Will that help? I really wouldn't recommend fully taking these things apart very often. Um, it's a much easier way to uh, deal with the whole the whole shebang without having to uh, fully disassemble it, where you'll keep the uh, the access lock and springs in place. You just kind of take the uh, the blade out when you want to. I think maybe that guy is kind of holding me back, so let's pull that guy off just a little bit. There we go, and we're through. So yeah. From there, pretty simple stuff. Slap that guy back on. I actually want a T8 piece here for the uh, the pivot. Usually, he'll toss a little bit of a uh, Loctite on there. At the moment, I don't really think it needs it since this is just kind of brand new. But yeah, go ahead and put that guy on there rather loosely. And then we can try to actually seat these guys on each side. So I've got to switch back to my T6 once again. Grab that little guy. And toss him in one of the holes. This guy in particular has free spinning um, uh, barrel spacers, which is uh, a little annoying when you're trying to put things back together. And if I do run into some issues here, I'll kind of show you how I get around some of that. So there's those two. Here's the other two screws for them. These go on the other end. Yep, so you can see I can just tighten and tighten and tighten and it doesn't really do anything because it's spinning internally. These aren't D-shaped. Um, some companies do do that, but uh, not all of them, that is for sure. Okay, so yeah. So those are a little free spinning. That's a little annoying. I have this little uh, tool here. It's called a Gorilla Grip. Uh, it's kind of a generic thing. You got a whole bunch of different uh, Torx pieces, but this goes from T6 to uh, T25. Generally, I'm only using this side, but this gives you a fairly sturdy place to hold things where you can actually get that in there and use it as an anchor and get your screwdriver in on the other side and just tighten them all up. Make sure that's the same for both sides. And I can do it here on the other one. Okay, and we're fully back together. Since this guy is running on bearings, uh, yeah, not too bad at all. I haven't reattached the, uh, the clip yet, but that's fine. I can do that here in a second. But yeah, that's a super easy way to uh, to take care of it. Now, the way that you would normally maintain these guys without taking the whole darn thing apart is you find which side of the pivot is the one that uh, freely rotates. This one, it's here. Do that, and you can take something, either one of these guys, I just used my bit, Put it right in that pivot and shove it through. That will knock the pivot out the other side. And you can easily take the blade out, do all your cleaning and maintenance and re-lubification and all that sort of stuff. And then from here, you can essentially just slap that guy right back in place. And then you get your uh, pivot and get him facing the right orientation and then just kind of put them back together now you'll get it kind of snapped in there 
that's when you're going to want to pull back a little bit on the access lock and that will force it through get everything all up in position and you can of course take your pivot screw slap him right back in and you're quite well maintained and no mess no heartache don't have to worry about dealing with any of the omega springs or getting that all back in place and yeah no blade play at all this guy's good to go that was fun I hope somebody uh, kind of got some information out of that and a little detailed information on how to uh, maintain and or put back together um, an access lock style knife or crossbar knife that uh, needs some maintenance so as always I appreciate you watching like, comment, and subscribe, because I got to do that. Because YouTube's, uh, you know, all about uh, all about pride and uh, all that good stuff. So yeah, hope you have just a wonderful rest of your day, yo.